Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna turn on a little bit of music here. I still have that thing where like sharing my screen doesn't share it onto stream, so we don't get like an unfortunately good audio of uh, it raining and everything like that. But um, we can have a little bit of background music. So, um, welcome everybody to uh, the 0.13 release party. I'm like super ecstatic about this one, um, and a lot because like in the past few days when we've been getting everything ready, like everything has fallen into place so nicely. Um, like, I think it was yesterday that I just took a look at the, uh, the release party map that Hannibal is, uh, has, has been working on for, like, a long time, like, months. And, uh, I am blown away by it. And so I'm very excited to hear, uh, what people think about it today. Um, and, yeah, we'll see how, uh, how everything goes. So, the one, one big thing we're trying to have for this release party is over 200 people on the server at once. And we are very, very quickly approaching. We are at 184 players online right now. Um, 185, actually. And I think our record before is 195. And the, the server's doing all right. Like, again, okay, I'm in North America, and what's my ping right now? 150 milliseconds. Like, 170. That, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so, uh, anyways, we'll hop into it. I think the plan for today's stream, uh, we're going to... <laughs> okay. I, I see that my stream's already, like, lagging a little bit. It's like, I, I want to see, like... I'm just gonna watch myself on YouTube and see how bad it is right now. I like to move around. Uh, I can't tell if it's like upload the user. Okay, it's not. It's not great. Okay, it's not great. Uh, but it, it should be okay. Or streamer, let me uh, more bandwidth through. But um, okay, so with me today, uh, I do have Xmac. Xmac, I'll bring you onto the stream here, and also. Uh, if you want to hop into the stage on Discord, I'll add you back to the stage just so people listening there can hear you. That is alright. Alright, well, you can hear me, X Mac. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Someone's just saying 200. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. 194. Wait, is... okay, I'm updating once a minute. Uh, and refreshing it. Wait, we broke, we broke 200. We just broke 200. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, okay, so we, we've been hoping for 200 for a long time. Uh, like, we, every release party we've been like closer a little bit, a little bit. Um, but we, we've actually made it, so yes. And I, I guess like maybe if people are watching the stream, that they encourage them to get on. Um, but the server is still holding up for 200 people, so that's not too bad at all. Um, Alright, so uh, first thing I will do, uh, in, wait, I can go location, party. And hopefully it teleports me to ah uh, yes the party island. <laughs> All right, so um, if you're if you're watching if you're just hopping onto uh, Valoran right now for the party, then you can use uh, slash location space party, and that will teleport you to where the party is happening, um, or I, rather I, I mean where everybody is, and then also where um, like where where everything has been spawned in for like for the islands. And so I'll let it load up here for for a few seconds, but. Uh, um, Xmac, are you also playing today? Are you on the server right now? I'm on the server right now. I'm just Wait, heading okay, to the forest this... and try to experience what's new. And maybe Perfect. jump over to the party location. And it looks like we're at like 214 right now, so we're, we're still going up a little bit. That's uh, very, very good. Um, I would like to see the 250, actually. If we see 250, that would be really, really great. That would be cool. Uh, 
yeah and so for us like th this is going to be like our, our biggest stress test that we've had in a while because we we've had times in the past few months we've hovered around like 170 players online at once um but we do want to see it see it go even higher than that so um yeah we, we shall we shall see how it goes now um in the release party i i think so i've been cheating a little bit because i 50 percent pay attention to the game and also i don't have like a high level character i, I think i have armor that's going to protect me if i die but i'm not entirely sure um yeah we can see we have uh a lot of people here at the spawn for um which one's like i'm just gonna change where my where my screen is my monitor's doing some funky stuff here all right i think that should be all right Cool. So, got a lot of people here. Um, if we look on the map, okay. So it, it does. It, it shows us on the mini map, but it doesn't show us on the the world map. Um, yeah. Okay. So it, it shows me like the island that's loaded in and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like, I'll be like that. Uh, I wonder what our render distance is set to. Uh, not that I want to encourage other people to turn it up right now. I think. Uh, oh no. Okay. It's Captain Sixteen. That's fine. All right, so uh, this five. Uh, wait, is it up to twenty-five? Mm, it is. Uh, it's not yeah. letting me go above sixteen. No, no, oh, it's two twenty-five. Is the, the number of players? Oh, two, wait, two thirty-five. Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Two twenty-five. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I can see that from yeah. Okay, if I just open it in game instead of looking at the graphs the whole time. Um, yeah, so in the late, latter half of the, the release party here, we'll take a look at some of the graphs and see how stuff is handling. Um, there have been quite a few optimizations that have been worked on in this version. Um, and I, uh, actually, Xbox, do you know if Sharp's work has been uh, merged yet with uh, faster? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's a big one. Prove it and improve it, but we haven't had a chance to merge yet. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got. I gotta say. With, like with this map, um, when I loaded it in yesterday, it amazed me first of all how big it was, and also just how elaborate it is. And so, I mean, if anybody's played Sea of Thieves before, I think uh, like, like this, that's what it reminds me of like so much. Uh, it's just like the the islands you can kind of like walk around, and um, and actually we, we did a code reading club with uh, or like a Valoran reading club rather with uh, Hannibal about some of these different temples and how they were created, um, and I have not yet explored them. So we have uh, every, well, not every release party, but during release parties, we try to do like some, some interesting things. And so what Hannibal has given us is a map that we can explore. Um, and it's pretty big. Like once I get up to the top of the temple here, and I'm trying not to cheat and use my like flying stick, I want to like try to walk around as much as possible. Um, but we'll be able to see a little bit, actually, yeah, if I zoom out, how big this is. Now, um, it's, it's not generating everything because there's like a lot more surrounding this. Um, but there's it's quite a large island that we're on right now. Oh, nice, we got some fireworks there. Very cool, very cool. Um, and so, yeah, quite quite a large island. Uh, there's been a lot of work done on it. Um, and also, you might have just seen that lightning in the top left corner. Uh, that's something that I think we'll, we'll explore a little bit later, because I, I want to, I'm hoping someone can maybe come on and talk about weather. But, um, I mean, yesterday was the first time I saw the lightning. OK, I mean, there it is again. It's so beautiful. Um, but, okay, sorry. So what I was trying to say was that with the temples here, we have uh, different things to explore around this island. And so um, it's sort of like a treasure hunt. Uh, Hannibal has hidden different chests around the island with different prizes in them. And so the first people to find these uh, chests will get some pretty awesome uh, pretty awesome gear, I think. I, I don't even know what's in, what's in the chests. And so uh, it'll be kind of exciting to, to hear what people have got. Um, I, I feel like there's a dungeon here. I, I don't know exactly if there is. I'll just go down it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't gone and explored everything at the, the lower levels of caves yet. <laughs> okay, this is pretty cool. So, uh, I do not know what we have going on here. It might be some type of puzzle. I'll flip a little bit through the, uh, the walls here to see. Sure, what we have there, uh, but I want to. So I think there's like another temple as well that is um, on the islands here. We'll take a look at that one. So Xmac, as I'm running around a little bit, uh, what's what's your favorite things for uh, for 0.13? 
Uh, for now it's just how smooth everything works, actually. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, that's true, yeah, that's I'm, true. I'm wandering around, I'm picking up every cotton flower and trying to abuse the merchants. They're giving me as much gold as possible. Nice, nice. Uh, by giving them like a lot of white flags and red roses and stuff like this. Yeah. But I'm probably, I, I've heard that there are those chests and um, I will probably head over white right soon to the party. Oh, I want those sweet items. Yeah, I'm, I'm exploring a little bit here because I, I want to uh, see what some of these uh, chests might have in them. <laughs> we can see another traveler here who's uh, having to, to rest every little while before they climb more because they don't have uh, an admin cape with unlimited uh, stamina. <laughs> Uh, like like me, the cheater. Um, I'm just naturally good at climbing. All right, what do we got here? So we got like a, another little temple on this island. And inside of it, I don't know if there's too, too much there. All right, I think my goal is to get over to the big temple over uh, over on the hill there. So yeah, we were uh, well, we were looking um, for like a, a map to generate. Um, we have uh, so, some constraints on like what we want a map to look like. Or is zebra down there? And so, for example, like actually, yeah, here I can just take a look at the, the map. So essentially, I, I, on my computer, I generated like fifteen different maps. Um, they all look different. We, we try to figure out which one works, and we might be switching it after a release party. We tend to like make one for the release party and use it throughout the, that version. But with this map. Um, one of the downsides was when I render them, I render them quickly by turning down the amount of erosion that's done, which doesn't um, portray the rivers properly. It will like show everything as being more underwater than it actually is. And so when I go and build the proper one, there's a lot, um, there's not as many rivers around the map. And so with this map here, it's, it's all right. Like we got some uh, rivers running into uh, this basin here. Um, yeah, presumably that's like lower than sea level. And so we got the rivers running into it. Um, but we'll probably generate another one afterwards. Um, so the, we have the restriction of wanting enough water to be generated. We have also the restriction of Hannibal, like, okay, Hannibal's like, I have a massive map and I need to put it somewhere. <laughs> and so we had to like find a lake to put it in um, and also keep it hidden a little bit so that uh, people didn't know until until uh, the release party here started. Um, also, okay, wait, wait, we're also arriving very closely. Uh, we're at 240 right now online. Um, okay, so we've blown past our, our previous record. This is amazing, and uh, we're still like the server's still doing all right. Um, it's definitely putting in a lot more work here and there. Um, network is uh, network's doing all right. We're doing like fifty megabytes out per second. Um, so that's like half a gigabit probably. Yep. Yep. And then, um, I mean, the other thing that I haven't mentioned just yet is we have, um, so yeah, for the release party, uh, Hannibal put a trailer together and uh, we're working on like a, a sea shanty um, song. And so it, like, we, we're still in the works for like the final version where we're gonna have like more singers. Um, oh, is, is it I, already done or isn't it already done? Because I would love to contribute and I also know others and just randomly talk about it and I would love to contribute. Is it, what one is, uh, can we still do this? Yeah, so I, I, I think the goal is that we want to put out um, a like the, like the, the full song that we can like have in game, and so like there's still work on it. Um, I'm like three weeks behind on blog posts, and so I need like Christoph wrote this like amazing thing on how to get started with it, and so I just need to like put that out. Um, but yeah, I, I've heard some early versions, and um, yeah, okay, so definitely just mentioning the like the lyrics and the sheet music is done, and we've seen more people singing, um, and so I did like a preliminary recording. Uh, first of all, so the first time I heard it, um, by, by the person who wrote it and by the person who sung it, I thought that we were taking some other sea shanty and then just like listening to it and then repeating it. But no, like uh, uh, the, the creator of it, Old Knock, um, actually like wrote it and sang himself, and it is it's really really good. I'm, I'm like super impressed oh. by it. Is it, um, is it private information or is this already public yet? Do you know what other lyrics, etc. I'm pretty sure it's public. I, I think we have. Uh, well, first of all, I get to the channels are, uh, are are public, so people can go check it out, type of thing. Um, but I mean, if you have any singers that are like, listening in right now, uh, you can always hop on the the Discord and ask about how you can participate in that. Um, 
And like this morning, like we, yeah, so I put, we put it on the trailer yesterday, and it was like stuck in my head this morning. Like I just like love how it sounds. But, like, All right, so what do we got in this uh, this cavern? All right, so we got like a two X. Um, all right. I feel like my person needs. I don't know. I also want to look at the chat. So someone asking, uh, our, our previous record was actually 195, so we haven't even broken uh, 200 yet. And right now we're at 249. Oh yeah, well, someone join the server, someone join the server. Okay, no, wait, we did have to get people. Right, have to people join the server. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Um, am I streaming this somewhere? Yes, let me, actually, I, I, it's just uh, the same post I'll post again in, uh, in the Discord here. about this, how the sea shanty thing is going to turn out and maybe after the party uh, please send me send me the link again so that I can experience it to the fullest yeah yeah absolutely I so with like the blog post I'll put out um, I'll put it in there I, I definitely also hope that this is like a, a potential base for like um, the, the ability to make, make more songs where people are singing like I think that's just super cool like for me being able to hear that people from like around the world with like different accents from like different places and different times and so are able to like contribute in that way is, is like really cool. Like the, the, the novelty of working on a project in the first place where um, you have people from all around the world was really awesome. But like, yeah, it's just like the extra cool stuff that can happen. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, also I'm gonna go check out the volcano now. We got some people climbing the volcano already. I can see off in the distance. Um, so I didn't even know there was a volcano in here yet. Um, until Zester mentioned it to me this morning. Um, and it is massive and it is cool. <laughs> we could also do like a race in a bit, I think. Like you have to start at the, at the, at the party location and then first person to, to the volcano or something. I'm gonna cheat a bit here, there we go. <laughs> Fast climbing. All right, so we got the volcano over here. Let's take a look at some other questions. So, um, uh, can I tame animals? So yeah, so this is something I know. I think Inojulus was working on this um, in zero point one three. I, I don't know all the details about it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So I yeah. I think with colors and then. Um, is there a reason why tamed pets don't respawn? Uh, I don't know, but it would be kind of funny if they just die and then <laughs> you don't have them anymore. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the, the design choices are uh, with that. I love the lava so much, like uh, just bubbling particles and everything. All right, I gotta remember to, to go explore some caves. Um, does someone fall into the lava or did they jump in? Oh yeah, people are just jumping, okay. <laughs> Oh, actually, I feel like there's a reason that they're jumping in. Okay, yeah, so I'll have to message Hannibal and see. Uh... Alright, okay, so we're at 260 now. I mean, okay, so if if it was possible to reach 300 today, that would blow away any expectation that I, I had for today. Uh, so this, this morning, like, we, we didn't make like a, a full trailer just because a lot of people were busy. Uh, we, we might put out like a trailer shows off that the features is 0.13 after. Um, but we, we didn't do like the big like days in advance telling people that we're gonna that we're gonna have like a release now. And so I was like, okay, like we, we might do all right with this uh, this release party. We'll see. Um, but, but reaching to, so reaching 200, I'm like, that, that, that would have made me happy. That, that would have been like, just that we just need to reach that threshold. Um, reaching 250 is crazy. Uh, reaching 300. Now that, that would be really something. All right. So, um, let's see here. 
kind of curious what's in the uh, what's in the lava. Oh wait, no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I'm not very smart. I, I guess I didn't have my admin Talbert on actually. I, I just assumed that I was going to fall over. Where are we? We're underwater. Let's go. Sweet glider, yeah. So I'll be honest. So I think this is the cultist set. So I was streaming last for like the last release party, and I was just wearing like, uh, like the basic garb because. Which way do I have? Yeah. Okay. So I got like some cultist stuff on here. Uh, I think I want the Talbert because that makes me vulnerable. Oh, yeah, I can't think of more. But yeah, so I was wearing just like the basic stuff, and then. Someone was like, okay, let's trade it and I'll give you like the, the stuff so that you can look cool. And now I look very cool. Oh, what's going on here? Is it fog? It must be fog in this area right now. Maybe I like the cloud rolling it. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, so uh we got weather for Zero Point One Three. And this is one of the big ones. Issa's been working on it for such a long time, and there's a lot to get right about it. Um a lot of stuff with audio, a lot of stuff with uh, uh, like just like rain in general, a lot of graphic stuff. Um, but then there's also lightning, which I mean, if you look off in the distance and you see lightning in clouds, like that's so cool. Um, all right, we got some uh, other questions here. <laughs> I tamed an axolotl and uh, it died almost immediately. Unlucky. Um, it was because of free look. Okay, yes, thank you, Terrier. Yeah, okay, so I guess, yeah, this is my, this is, well, potentially. Oh yeah, okay, I'm looking for funny. Good call, good call. Um, let's see here. Yeah, people are telling me now I just had L pressed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I had a different chat open, so I didn't see the Discord chat, but people are telling me they're like, <laughs> press L, press L, read the screen. Yeah, that, that's the thing is like, when it comes to release parties and stuff like that, I tend to be the one who streams. Um, but my knowledge of a lot of stuff is like very, very, very zero point three esque, right? Like I, I, I haven't ever done crafting, and I haven't ever done like full questing and anything. And so it's probably going to be like at some point once we have like, um, like a lot of story and stuff implemented, then I just start the game, and I have to figure out my way through it and actually how to how to interact with it. I think that would be a, a good plan right there. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll see how that how that goes. Uh, yeah, we got uh, all the all the fireworks over here, uh, part of this and stuff like that going on. Um, normally, oh yeah, that's pretty sick. Uh, okay, I'm gonna hop us over to uh, a different screen for a second here. And X Mac, let's talk about some of the performance of this version. Oh sure. Let's figure out which screen it is. Oh, I see that some... Alright, 267. That's, uh, that's pretty high right now. Okay, so... Okay, so server thinks it's only using <laughs> 200 megabytes of memory. Yeah, I guess, so, um, one of the really big things that we did during this version was, um, upgrade from our cloud server with Hexner to a dedicated server. Yeah, yeah. 
And, and so essentially, when we upgraded the server, something went wrong with uh, changing out Prometheus, I think, or just something, and so like it's not tracking the server properly. Yeah, uh, let me say, I, I was just too lazy to... Yeah, we haven't, we haven't like, fixed that yet, but we're, we're pretty confident that a lot of the um, the, the memory is like doing pretty okay. The, the biggest you know, bottleneck for us is, uh, is some new stuff. Memory never has been an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, memory is not not the biggest problem for us. But the biggest thing that we got from upgrading to a dedic from from a Hester Cloud server, which uses. I assume like an AMD, what well, we were doing like the AMD version, it was like AMD Epic maybe. Um, yeah, some, some server type some of server AMD processor. CPU, yeah. um, but the benefit that we get from upgrading to the AX101 was that um, I think the Epic is probably Zen 2, whereas the, the new Ryzen is Zen 3 that we're using. And so yeah. we get a new uh, chip architecture. And someone correct me in chat if I'm wrong, I might be using like the, the wrong numbers there, or like the wrong names. Um, but with the uh, with the, the newer architecture, then we get a lot better. Well, it should be better for like single threaded processing, which has allowed us to effectively have more players online at once. And so that's sort of what we've been um, experiencing is that once we got up to like the 180 number, we're not, um, it, it's not doing so bad anymore. And right now, I mean, we're like over 250 and we're still doing all right. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. Also, um, it's important to say that, of course, the consumer um, CPUs of AMD run at a much higher uh, tech rate than the, the server grade. Right? We are we're probably running at 4 or 5 gigahertz mm -hmm. a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is always like a difficult one to like know for certain how um, you, you change like the, the clock speed versus um, like operations per second and like uh so for example like server cpus um i'm, I'm pretty sure they're much better at doing uh in, in a clock cycle a lot more of a certain operation uh, which helps certain workloads a lot um but we may or may not be making like a good use of that so okay i'm gonna change my stream quality 720 so i can see okay yeah, that's something. um yeah and so yeah we, we've been able to know that we're going to handle more players well but we don't know. We still don't know what the upper limit of this is. Um, and once we, I think once we reach the upper limit where we're like, ticks are taking like 90 milliseconds on this CPU. Let's say we have like 300 or 350 players. I'm not sure how much it would take. Um, it will, like, we'll, we'll have to really focus in a lot more on just optimizing what's going on under the hood. Um, I expect one question from chat that maybe you can answer. What are uh, what parts of the code are the biggest bottlenecks? Um. That's a very good question. Um, we can, we can have a look at uh, this system change chart, right? Yeah. Um, and what we are seeing is which parts of the tick are processed in which order. And this is not a full image here, um, but this shows part of the story. We, for example, see that um, buff calculation, the calculation of all buffs, is quite expensive yet, and we don't actually know why. Um, it should not be that expensive. If we hover over it, we probably see numbers, right? 10 milliseconds or 7 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. um, then the biggest bar that we see is always the physics bar. Yeah. This is very well optimized and it's a known limitation. And then we have other limitations like character behavior that um, also blocks a lot of, of the. Um, yeah, of, of the tick time on, on the server. And just to confirm, so essentially like every second we want to have the server do 30 ticks, which means that from the left side of this chart to the right side, we want this to be less than 33 milliseconds, right? Exactly, that's, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we have something, like physics is hard to, to, to improve. Um, there, obviously like, we can always do things, but um, 14 milliseconds is like about half of the what, what, what we want the entire tick to be. But then on the other hand, with buff being six milliseconds, seven milliseconds, um, this is something that we really want to try and take down as much as we can. Yes. Also, um, a lot of this, as like for example, if we look, have a look at this character behavior, um, we can see that the character behavior system in the RT sim is running in parallel with load chunks. Um, but 
actually we cannot parallelize multiple systems here, right? We could, for example, the problem is that the character behavior takes so has is modifying so many components of a comp uh, of a player that it's hard to code parallelism into this. Mm -hmm. And so we aim to have simple systems that just changes single thing, maybe. Um, in the hope that we have a number of simple systems that add um, in the end uh, can be scheduled around and also parallel. Yeah, like for example, like all everything right here, like right. everything all here those stuff can be calculated in parallel, and this also improves the performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another point in chat. I don't understand how a free box or a free box open world game can be this awesome. Um, it's because there's a lot of people who make it awesome. A lot, a lot, a lot of people. Um, we we all came from um, either playing Cube World before, or playing Minecraft before, or other things before, or I mean, just wanting to work on a project and like bringing our own talents and stuff. And so, um, yeah, it's all about the team. Um, is the world procedurally generated? So, okay, so this is actually this is a pretty interesting one. So, if we take a look at you. like the trees over there the tree uh, i am pretty sure trees are procedurally generated they might have models um towns are procedurally generated um so a lot about the world is but what we have when we look at the the, the pirate island here uh, this was not procedurally generated this was handcrafted by uh, by hannibal and one of the really powerful things about having people come in and handcraft islands like this is it really inspires us to say oh a lot of really cool stuff we like how um like the island looks we got like these bridges between islands and then people can like use that as a takeaway to like oh well can we generate stuff like that procedurally and so there's like this really cool side of um going from concept art into um something that we can actually procedure procedurally generate we've we seen that a decent amount i think um uh like in the early days of the learn a lot of people were making different concept art of different voxel models and different um, I like place it like buildings or caves or anything like that, and uh, I, I want to go and find a cave that we can do a walk through because um, it's very very impressive what uh, uh, like the work has been going on recently uh, with caves. Um, okay, so let's let's go and find something. We'll use our uh, cheat wand here to fly across the land. It's doing like a lot of collision detection with me right now. Also, how many players are here right now? 247, okay, okay. Still holding up pretty well. Okay, so in theory, there is a cave entrance somewhere around here. Not the best at finding the uh, the cave entrances. Oh, never mind. There it is. All right, we'll set our uh, spawn point back to here. Oh, wait, no, that's, uh, I thought that was a campfire. That's not a campfire. It's a very big uh... <laughs> scorpion spider. <laughs> We love to see it. All right. Um, just going back down chat. Um, X Mac, a question from chat. If the character behavior system would calculate all the character state updates without write access to the component resources, um, so all updates applied at once at the end of dispatch, wouldn't it be faster? Yes. Um, so this is thing that might is might be complex to implement, but might actually help. Um, and it would be worked in the following way. Every system, instead of 
directly uh, modifying the underlying resources. This would defer them, um, inviting them to to maybe a list, and then later in the the tick, this list is actually then just um, run over. This would also have the cool side effect that we could use that for plugins. We could give plugins access to this list. For example, a list would be um, contain all the um, health changes that are done for a player. And um, rather than directly modifying the health, the uh, system would then add both a node on this list, like uh, decrease player health of ABC by 5. And then if we could give that list also to plugins. Um, and plugins could, for example, decide, uh, hey, um, this is an invalid access because there is actually a, a protected zone or something. Yeah, and so I, I think we've seen that before with the, there's a one system, um, I think the event system, that's what I implemented, was like changing it from doing direct accesses to adding it to, I think, the event bus. Yes, the problem there is the size of the event bus. Um, basically, it would be the simpler thing like the event bus, but um, we would have like one bus per yeah, and, and so basically we just want to make sure that we're not doing this optimization when it's not gonna, when it's too small to make a difference. Then either that or doing this optimization like multiple systems in a, in, a, in a similar way or writing something like a framework for it so it's easier to implement that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we might include this tactic actually in the I feel like I've just arrived at somewhere in the dungeon that is part of the new um, cave system. We got like this big open room with like a lot of uh, stalactites, I think. through it, um, like learn the different trails and stuff like that. Oh, what have I arrived at? Oh yeah, I can now I'm down to the lava level. I love the color so much. Have I arrived at the bottom? Oh, ooh, I still have health. Okay, I'm good. I don't know which uh, admin cape I need to uh, prevent any damage from lava. Uh, let's just... Location, park T. Another question we have is, when will the game be considered alpha? I don't, hmm. I don't, I don't know if you call like our 0 0.12, 0 0.13, like alpha necessarily. I think that we sort of have ideas in our own head of like, if we were to break it down to a roadmap, what would need to be done to consider the game like more complete or done. And for a lot of it, um, I think like one of the big ones would be like a lot more story stuff, a lot more questing. Um, and then uh, probably the modding system as well. I think that one's pretty important to, to to have so that we can start having more derivative content. Yep. Or stuff that doesn't need to be merged upstream. That's a hard problem to solve, though. There's a lot of work that needs to go into the mod system. All right, I haven't even checked out the tavern yet. Ooh, we got a we got the chef. I love cheese. Me too. Sorry, I don't have anything to trade. Mamma mia. All right, we can 
climb up the, the stairs over here. Oh, I can turn my lantern off, I think. It's a very bright lantern. Oh, I like this. Everybody's chilling. <laughs> Someone's shooting a lot of bows and arrows. Little cafe here. I'm just going to take a quick look at the entire uh, mention of things that we have released. Okay, so we have modular weapons. Um, I don't know how to show this off exactly. Let's go. We did real-time weather. Take a look at Cliff Town. Interconnected cave network, cave biomes. Okay, so we did see. I guess we did see the biomes. We saw like the the lava side, and we saw the the big open area. Uh, LOD trees. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll point it out. Um, so, for example, like if we look off in the distance, there we used to have uh, okay, early Valorn, very similar to Minecraft. You can only see what's within your chunk. Um, like your, your chunk view distance. Then, after a while, uh, LOD terrain was implemented, and this, this to me was like one of the like the, the biggest changes that like set Valorant apart from like a lot of other voxel games I've seen. Is that you can like see mountains off in the distance, and they don't need to like fully render themselves. They're just they're just meshes. But and actually, I mean, I can uh, sort of take a look at it. We go close right here. So this is like one of the mountains that's very far away, um, and like the mountains being rendered. But then. This version, one thing that was implemented was the LOD trees. And so, um, for example, I mean, you, you can see that all these trees are like very uh, low poly type of thing. But from the stance of me looking at them over there, it looks, it, it makes it so it's not just like a, like a, a flat terrain where you can, you can see like color, you can see like the, the form it makes. And if I went over to that mountain, it would actually be that mountain. Um, but yeah, we got the LOD trees now. We've got more character customization options, so if I make a new character, you will see that. Like NPC personalities, yeah. and a lot more as well. Oh yeah, I didn't... I don't know why, okay, we did start the, the this party. Would it be fun to create a location of a cave and have everyone go spawn? Yeah, okay, actually, uh... Okay, so I think Issa is going to go and find a cave location for us to um, be able to teleport to. That would be pretty cool. Uh, oh, I like the play location. Love it. Uh, thanks for frogging in chat. Stalagmite is from the ground up. Stalactite is from, uh, <laughs> uh, from the roof. Yeah, okay, so in chat, looks like we got some people who want to find the caves as well. Uh, so yeah, if we make a location, that'd be pretty awesome. What oh, did we hit? The 300s? No, no, all right. Yeah, already declining a bit. The yeah, so I, yeah, it looks like we, we hit our peak of, well... Oh, yeah, 275, I see. Yeah, 275. Yeah, this is fair, this is awesome. This is yeah, it's almost I... 100 more than our previous score. Yeah, I could never have imagined that. Yeah. Alright, Issa's off looking for a, for a cave to check out. Any noobs want stuff for free? Yes, yes I do. Yeah, I also want to find caves and stuff for free. I created a new character for the party, so... Oh, there's someone. Oh, that's probably already. A red bandana. I've acquired a red bandana. So I'm not entirely sure, but do we have our ships move? So I know we have airships that can move. Are ships in the water able to move? I think Oops. I feel like James had mentioned it to me once that I just spawned one. <laughs> you spawned the ship. I, I wanted to know if ships are able to be moved. <laughs> Wait, where are you? Um, it's 
kind of buggy a bit. Is TPX? Uh, what's your what's your character name right now? X. Find for X. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a kind of Bob. Uh, buggy <laughs> shit. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. I call it Jumpy. Jumpy make both jump. Yes, I mean... Okay, let me just uh, go chill from the wall over here. So, we do have ships that can move. I mean, this is a, a very good... Uh, the, the physics here are about as realistic as Sea of Thieves, and so... I think that's uh, pretty good for the secret. I want to be above and I'll ride the ship. And maybe it's because I spotted so near the land. We do have uh, good physics, I suppose. Can I go on the inside? Oh. oh is this in the wow. <laughs> it is very much like a trampoline. Uh, the momentum is shifting to me. Inside of air shipper. Yes, we do have incredible physics. Yeah, so um, I mean, the, the physics system is actually in incredibly like intricate. How it like ties into a lot of different things. Oh wait, this is spawn. Wait, never mind. We've been here the entire time. Um, so because a lot ties into the physics system, then we'll see that when like we jump, we like it, it feels like we're like jumping on the moon a little bit compared to a lot of other games. But that's because. Um, it takes into account like actual like gravity that's being like it, it, um, exerted against us, and then also like if you were to be hit with something <laughs> like a uh, like a hammer or something like that, it'd be able to apply like proper momentum to us. Um, and I mean the 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 biggest thing that we get from it is amazing feeling when you're in, like using a glider to to fly down somewhere. Um, and so if you're flying down a mountain or you're exploring a cave or something like that, like the, the flying physics in here feels so good. All right, let's go up to the airship up here. <laughs> I apologize for the very uh, quick movement. <laughs> I think someone's piloting this. Yeah, there's a ship over there. Alright, I'm waiting to hear from Issa about uh, what we might see for teleporting to a cave. Wait, I guess. Location. And will tell me. Uh... <laughs> I'm getting traded. No trade, please. Oh, that's a pretty nice inventory. Mine is like. Not very full. <laughs> the flying pirate ship adds so much to the uh, the characteristic. Of the okay, location cave, location cave. So, location cave. All right, for anybody who wants to come uh, splunking, we can now location cave. All right, we got some people here. So, which which uh, cave we're at? We're at uh, one inland a bit. 
Wait, where am I? I'm right here. Alright, inland a bit, and uh, that's what we got. I think someone posted a video. I put in the, the 0.13 release uh, blog post um, of them like flying down caves and like they got some like pretty good distance on on one hop here. Everybody's using their mechanics their to accelerate here. Um, I think, so I, I'm pretty sure Kristoff implemented skiing. And so it might be possible to ski down caves. I'm not sure about that. We gotta put the people at the front who can kill things, because I would likely die very quickly. Oh, I gotta go check the, uh... I switch over to, like, an admin chat and then forget to... Uh, get back after. Let's see what people are saying. Um... Yeah, sometimes that's what our server specs. Everything except world gen is pretty smooth. Um, yeah, so we're running on um, Hesner's AX 101, uh, which is a Ryzen 9 x CPU, so it's pretty good. You get screen share on stage. Um, so I, I wish Discord allowed us to screen, sh uh, screen share on stages, but unfortunately they do not. They, they like instantly become like a, a Twitch competitor, you know? like. If you could just go watch streams on uh, a big channel in Discord, but with a stage, unfortunately, you can only talk. Skiing on snow or skating on ice should work. You need to encrypt the proper stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess I can't ski down cave dirt. We're in the Nightwell Uplands. <laughs> I feel like uplands are a term for above ground things, but it's an interesting concept for caves. Is this an update to uh, Cube World or something? Uh, not exactly. So we, we were inspired by Cube World to, to start this game, but since then we've taken it very much in like our own direction of what we want to see in terms of um, a lot of design elements, a lot of combat elements, um, and just about like the world in general. And so I, I think one way that I, oh, that was a good, that was a good uh, dip right there. One way that we described it during a talk that we were giving was um, the cube, cube world's colors are very vibrant and um, like happy and anywhere you go is like um, like, like a very, very bright. And uh, with us, like there, there's still a lot of stuff that's like very vibrant and bright and stuff like that. But um, it was described as like a much more like visceral look of a, like a world where like we're, we're trying to simulate like mountains and stuff like that that look more realistic to like what what we would expect in real life in a lot of ways and so a lot of work has been done uh, like a lot actually yeah now that i think about it i remember writing several blog posts about uh the color correction and um a lot of work that went into figuring out how to, to make tiles look and stuff like that um and yeah so there's definitely a lot that has been done to um to find our own feel uh, of what we want in like this, this type of voxel game um, and I mean, we also had like a lot of core tenets when we started. Like, we wanted well, it to be like very MMO focused. Uh, we wanted to take inspiration. Or and when I sorry, when I say MMO focused, I mean like you can play with a lot of people. So, um, you're, you're not restricted. And um, also, another big one was that we wanted to do a lot of exploration into what different simulation we could do. So obviously, like, before we spawn into the world, there's already a world gen that's been done to, to create the world. Um, I mean, more there's layers of world transfer. There's like the part where we generate all of the terrain, which is like, if you look at the map, is what you can see around the world. Then 
there's also layers at, like when when the server starts um like regard like if you're playing single player or multiplayer where it will go and like okay we'll um look at terrain find places to put a village um follow all the procedural rules to generate that village in a certain way and eventually uh after like all of these possible we load this world what's this a very interesting pattern site, which I think should be linked on YouTube slash Twitch, um, valoran.net, then there's like the download tab there. Someday we'll uh, we'll make it to Steam. I think the only thing blocking us from being on Steam right now is that we need to like make like a uh, non-profit organization so that Steam will accept us. Okay, what's going on here? We got a little path underneath. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I didn't expect there to be like another cave entrance down here. Yeah, I gotta say, like, the work that's been done on the, the caves has been, like, always impressive every time I come back. It'd be cool to see, like, a 3D view of the, the cave system, like a map or something. Okay, at least I hit that so I didn't fall into lava here. Uh, I'll probably die right here. Alright, bye. How do you put your tab or get? Okay, wait, well, actually, so inventory, let's take a look. Did I, Asmin's Talbot. I think it's on, that's on, right? I think it's on. Great sword, great sword, bow. I imagine it's on. Someone tell me if I don't actually have it equipped properly. Yeah, I see uh, people in chat talking about how nice the uh, the release party map is. I, I was talking with Zester about it this morning because like Zester hopped in, uh, like I was hosting a local server to, to set some stuff up, and Zester hopped in and he was like blown away by how a lot of uh, how a lot of it worked as well. Uh, or not not worked, but just looked in general like the, the amount of effort that went into it. 
Um... Okay, we died. Next Mac, I'm coming to you. <laughs> okay, I kept dying after I respawned. It was a little bit of... Uh... T P X Mac. You are above ground now. Um, let me go back to party. Oh, no. Vacation. Any plans to continue portals between server idea? Um, yeah, because we have like, I mean, thinking about what it can mean to hop between servers, there's always, I mean, general ideas. Like, it, it would be very nice if uh, we're on this Valoran Island right now, and if we start sailing in the direction, we'd come to another Valoran Island that's on a different server. And that would allow us to have uh, much more people in the same world without necessarily having um, too many people in the same server. Um, but it would require a lot of thought to, to figure out how that will work properly. Alright, let's go around and explore the island more. I want to see it in its, uh, its entirety. Are you playing on Linux? I am. I did something messed up to my uh, graphics card recently, and I don't know what. Um, but I'm fixing it by like always running the game with uh, VK AMD something. It, it like, just made the force the force ball to use the proper hardware, I think. Something crashes if I don't do it, so... Um, but, I mean, we, we basically have Linux as the, the first class operating system for uh, Valor in a lot of ways, just because so many developers use... Um, there are so many of our developers use Linux to make the game. I see lightning off in the distance. There was some work done on, like, uh, the volume, so you can't hear it too far away, but... I want to make like a, oh yeah, I want to make a suggestion that um, it'd be really cool if you could hear lightning uh, proximity, or not proximity based, but like, uh, I'm like, let's say I'm like two kilometers away. Um, it'd be really cool if I could hear it delayed by however long the speed of sound was from like how, how far it is. That'd be very cool. Uh, okay. Uh, so it has given me a. that they're in the uh, oh, boots. <laughs> oh my god, I love walking with these. Alright, let's find a snowy mountain. Okay, if I go off in that direction, I should be good. Taking the chair lift up the mountain here. Oh, the tutorial button. Yeah, sorry, I gotta... There we go. Oh, I have lost uh, control of a uh, comma again. Okay, there we go. Oh, I have equipped the wrong items. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, so Dr. Lynx is mentioning it wouldn't be too hard to have, um, like, the lightning sound be far off type of thing. Um, yeah, just, like, waiting amount of time, depending on distance. How much dev uh, game dev knowledge do you think is needed to start contributing? Is it a custom engine? Yeah, so this is a, a really good question. Um, so if we do use a, a custom engine in the sense of um, we, we don't use like a different underlying um, engine to, to make everything work, but we do have a lot of different, um, may, maybe you call them framework slash libraries. Like we use WGPU for our graphics. We use specs for our Etsy component system. And this definitely gives us a lot of benefits when it comes to um, not having to implement everything from the ground up and having like a, a good ecosystem to work in. All right. 
Uh, do I have to do anything to uh, use the skis in general, or do I automatically slide with them? I'll let uh, someone tell me in chat here. Um, but then ask for, for contributing on the other hand. Um, you can absolutely come and contribute without any game dev knowledge or even, I mean, not a lot of Rust knowledge. Um, I, so I, I think that our current setup for onboarding new people works uh, best when people are familiar with what they want to try and do because we can say, okay, well, we can help you in that direction. Um, but amount of knowledge can vary a lot. And we have like a lot of different tasks that can be done where a, like a lot of the core developers will want to help you and like um, see that you can like, like, like help you through getting everything ready, um, get everything set up, going and working on the, the problems, giving like feedback and stuff. Um, uh, wait, wielding excludes gliding from now. Oh, okay, I did something that's working now. Okay, so can I... <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do like a sick jump off this side. Uh, this cliff here. Alright. Alright, we can... Uh... <laughs> okay, I didn't take too much damage, that's good. Yeah, so I, I guess, uh, yeah, so some of these snowy mountains are uh, doing pretty well for it. Okay, the fitness are working pretty nice. <laughs> Taking a bit of damage here and there, but you know. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, and this is a good mountain for it too, it's like very, very tall. Gotta make sure I'm hitting the snow patch properly. <laughs> I'm certainly not watching where I'm going. It'd be cool if I could like um, be almost like stuck a little bit more to the, uh, the the hill as I'm going down, and so like it'd be harder to like lift off the lift off the ground. But I mean, this still is like some like, great opportunity for some courses here. <laughs> I really like just falling off a cliff. I think that's a great addition to it. Our speeding ability. When will we? Uh, when will when will the launch of support free BSD? I feel like so Rust does have free BSD targets. Um, for the longest time, the only thing that was preventing us from having a target for uh, our I think was just someone like going into CI and like setting it up. And then similarly, the, the reason that we didn't have the launcher for um, a, a launcher for the M1 Mac with the, like, the, the M1's architecture was that uh, we just didn't have, like, it was just not in CI. So I think a Nodulus went and got most of that set up. And there might be like a little bit more work to do, but. Yeah, so I mean, you could be the one to to give us free BSD support. What made me guys choose WGPU and specs over Bevy? Um, so the biggest thing was that uh, when we started the product, uh, mid twenty eighteen, um, Bevy was not released, and um, neither was Legion, neither was a lot of other um, stuff that you would see in like the ecosystem nowadays. Um, but then the other reason is that when you use an engine, um, you're bound to, well, you're, you're not bound to like, like, for example, you, um, you'd be using the implementations that are provided for, for certain things that you might want to do yourself. And so for example, and I, I haven't done that much engine work, so I don't know everything about it, but like, let's say like the game loop or something like that. Um, in Bevy, it might be implemented a certain way and there might be opinions about making it general purpose. And this is, this is amazing for making, um, most general games. Um, but then the, the other question is like, why didn't we use like Unreal or Unity or Gino or other engines? And, um, yeah, so like the, the biggest reason is like, they all provide some general, um, implementations that might not work for us. And this is something that we have to be very careful on because we're, the, the biggest bottleneck for us is in a lot of ways. And so, um, when you have the server running, um, 
and I mean like server is different than clients and things like that. But uh, when, when you have the server running, um, and I, I actually no, actually let's talk more about the client. So with, with a client, we need to render as many chunks as we can on lower end hardware, and that's like very specifically our requirement. We don't want to do stuff with special meshes that um, and like animations that like are, are done in three D games in different ways. But then. Um, with being able to implement everything ourselves, we have a lot of control over, over all of this. And so I, I don't think we couldn't make it in bed. And I, I don't think that we would necessarily, um, uh, it wouldn't be a guarantee that it would be uh, slower or worse in any way. Um, but it would, if we did want to use Bevy or wanted to use some components from the mini ecosystem, it would require a, a rewrite of a lot of things. And so, how is uh, performance, by the way? Yeah, so, um, I mean, just like on the topic of performance, um, the, the client tends to work pretty okay. I think that there can still be a lot of work done to have like just graphics improvements that are like sane, or like sane batteries included for different systems. So for example, um, I was doing some, like we were, we were running it on the Steam Deck and taking a look at how it was running. And it was 60 FPS in most places, but like 40 in some other places. And so it'd be like, if we had a release for, or if we, if we made like a specific profile where we, we know it runs at 60 FPS on a Steam Deck because um, it has like some lower graphics in this area and um, the new distance is sent to that or something, um, then that would be like a, a pretty good way to go. But then on the server, on the other hand, this is really where like um, a, a lot of performance time goes into is figuring out how we can make server ticks faster with a certain number of players. And like right now we have like 200 players online right now. Um, Um, yeah, so, so performance, um, performance is pretty good. I mean, from, from the end user perspective, like most people can get 60 FPS. It doesn't require like crazy graphics cards, um, but we still want to make it more accessible to people who are at Um, okay, yeah, so a, a good question. I think I've seen it uh, in chat, but, um, if I wanted to make, uh, mean cosmetics for people learn, how would they get added to the game? Okay, so with stuff that's added, like different blocks of stuff, um, it's pretty much up to the leads of the, uh, like the SX team uh, to, like, to get some merch and make sure that's okay. And I mean, it's really like, uh, we, we trust them all, like, uh, 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 we, we trust certain teams for like making decisions. So for example, like, I haven't really had much input into a lot of either like, let's say like game design or um, uh, different like aesthetics and cosmetics and stuff like that. But I love what like what comes out, and so it would be up to these teams to allow it. But then I think the better way to look at it is how could a system be added, like a mod system, where you can create whatever asset pack you want, and it goes to like an asset store, and then you can have like you'll end up with Skyrim where you have like the boss like dragons or crabs, you know, and like that would be pretty cool. But I, I think it, it requires like a bit more work into um, thinking how this how the system should work at the time. I have to drop out. All good. Well, thank you for joining XMAC. There any Always specific there. question that is yeah, regarding to uh, me where I can help? Otherwise, I will probably be offline. Uh, everything might quite smooth here. I, I think you wrote a blog post that um, I haven't put out yet. I feel like it was about... I don't remember what it was about. I don't know if it was networking. Physics. Um, New physics. What part of physics was it? It was about the part of physics that it's server side, but it's not laggy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, are are you doing work on that right now with like the multiplayer system? Um, actually, not. Actually, I try to uh, reduce the errors we have in our current physics implementation, mm. and especially in our current. Um, um, what is it called? Um, What's friction friction models? But as if as soon as this is resolved, I will probably be working on this, and I will probably try to contact Xware and also work with them together. Yeah, yeah. And so for zero point one four, like, what are some maybe like the things we can expect um, to to maybe see on this uh, on this front, like in, in would, physics client server I would, tour? I would hope that this could be ready for. 0 to 14. Yeah, it would okay. dramatically improve physics and also network coding 
um, and it would also help um, moving too quick. Mm -hmm. It would not help moving too quick, but it would improve um, the advantage we would get from the system being quick. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, well, thank you very much for stopping by and telling us a little bit about some of the behind the scenes stuff that we're seeing. Um, and I guess I'll catch you. Well, I guess tomorrow we have a meeting for uh, Tomorrow I will be available. Yep. Yeah. Everyone enjoying the party. Have fun. Cheers. I'll see you. Bye bye. Alright, so I've been, uh, I've been skiing for a bit here. I like this winter wonderland. We got one. Let's go back to the, uh, the party though. Uh, Are you guys using any specific libraries for networking, or is that made by yourself entirely? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, XMAC would be the, the, the one to answer that, uh, or more specifically, but um, we do, as far as I know, we have um, our entire networking stack is done by ourselves. Um, I mean, short of, like, not implementing TCP and everything like that, but everything above there, um, we handle. And, I, yeah, so, I, I know that there's some interesting work being done to try and um, essentially split up different channels. Essentially, we have one, as far as I know, you have one connection to the server right now. You have the ability to like just send and receive. You know, maybe you receive train data. Maybe you receive entity data, so like where things are around the world. Um, you receive movement data, all this kind of stuff. And then you send your own data. But in the uh, in one optimization that's being worked on is separating these into different channels where. Um, I believe your own movement getting sent back and forth would be done in like UDP, so it's like faster, less reliable, but um, it, it is it is quicker. Maybe there are some different things people are using like quicker speed. Like um, and then things like uh, chunk updates or something can be sent to you over TCP, and so they're slower, but they're more more reliable. But you don't necessarily need them the next frame type of thing. Um, Yeah, so that's, uh, as far as I know, that's some, like, the, the, the cool stuff that's going on with... Oh, what's this? What's this? Okay, we got a quarry over here. Is there a cave down here? There's not. Uh, maybe. Is peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer possible? Um... I suppose, so, it's not. We do client server now, and... I think WebRTC allows you to do peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, I don't know if it would be as easy as like implementing a uh, like a, a different backend for it or something like that, or if there's like more that needs to be done, um, or necessarily like, what benefits it would give. I suppose if you don't want to like do a lot of port forwarding and stuff, then it could be a, a good way to do stuff. Um, I don't know if there's overhead to WebRTC though. Not, I mean, I guess we don't need to send like a ton of data. Well, okay, I should know. If you were hosting on your home network and you were like playing with your friends, you'd need a pretty okay internet connection for like train updates and stuff. But maybe, maybe that wouldn't matter so much. That that'd be kind of cool though. Like where um, you could just like yeah, say start start a server and you're you're good to go. You don't have to um, port forward. Uh, it just like connects you automatically. That's what I think there's. Yeah, so WebRCDC was specifically built for peer to peer. Um, it can do you can do client server with the build. I guess yeah, I think Discord uses WebRTC. Um like if you're on the I mean desktop client is technically a web browser. Electron moment. Stopping us from, or yeah, okay. So I, I suppose 
If we don't build for a target, what would be stopping us is either Rust doesn't support it, like you, you can't target it, uh, or rather it's not like one of like the, the first class target, second class target type thing. Or there's something in our stack that doesn't work as well for it, or like that we're good for it for now. And so this is like why we don't build for web browser right now, is I'm not sure what in the stack was something can't compile to Wasm. Um, yeah, I don't know all the restrictions on this, and it might be possible to swap up parts of it, but and for Android as well, I think that there's stuff in the graphics stack that isn't ready for, for it yet. Yeah, the web RTT stack was way over my head. That, that's what I've heard about it, is if you need, so if you need to implement it from scratch, where you don't have like a server that's just going to do everything for you, and you just need to use some simple API, then there's a lot to it that is like more ugly. It's like diving into like, you're like oh, Vulcan was like, just like a, a nice graphics API, and then you have to like draw a triangle and sell this a thousand lines. So, yeah. It's an interesting beast. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Issa points out um, nothing stops, so in, in terms of like making your own cosmetics or, I mean, doing any of this stuff really, nothing stops you from working real hard and making. Like you're hosting your own server, making a whole bunch of meme, uh, cosmetics and stuff like that. Of course, like we do have like the GPL3 license, so you'd have to keep it open source. Um, but yeah, that's like one of the beauties of uh, with open source is just if you, if you want to see something, just do it yourself. All right, I'm just gonna take a look through the chat here. See if I'm missing anything. Sam's talking about how his uh, target folder for Valoran. Um, so, like when you compile Rust, it like adds intermediary compilation steps and stuff to uh, like a folder inside your your source directory. And this directory is very large a lot of the time. And so Sam's was like over 200 gigabytes and had to uh, had to delete it one time. But it sounds like it's up to 100 gigabytes now. Um, I think like on our runners, we have to have like. I don't know how much exactly. Actually, I, I guess it's mostly for Docker images now, for like our, our continuous integration. It's mostly like the Docker images that we have to uh, keep a certain size uh, or a certain amount of space available for. Oh, it's a crocodile. That's not a crocodile. It's a salamander, that's what it is. All right, I wanna... Do some swimming over here. <laughs> Why is there a dragon at the party spawn? That is a good question. Where's that? At the tavern. Oh yeah, spawns in a, a safe zone so we get to um, not worry about dying. Yeah, the bigger question is what's the, what's the ship turn over there? I mean, it's, it's still retaining its uh, momentum, it's still going. We'll probably call it soon for the uh, the, the stream here. Um, of course, like we'll have the the release party map open for like a few days, so you can always keep exploring it. I'll have to check with Hannibal later to see like if uh, like who's found stuff from different chests. I'm very interested to to hear how the the scavenger hunt has gone. Yeah, someone else mentioning uh, their target folder tends to be the largest folder on their PC. There's like a, a cargo plugin that allows you to, it just like recursively searches through everything in a directory and sees if there's any cargo things inside of it. And then it will automatically like delete everything. Ooh, 
to Unkeem Fee Silence mentions that there's um, potentially a final room that no one has found so far. So yeah, some more exploring to do there. Right, we'll go up to the top of this temple and then we'll call it there. Yeah, okay, so what are we at right now? We're at 204, so we're still over 200. That's pretty good. Um, we, we tend to see, like, after a release party, it, it's, it goes down to about, like, 75% of the maximum amount of players online. Maybe up to a set But, like, uh, yeah, for, like, the next few days, we'll probably see like, quite a few players online still, which is always great. at 271. I, I feel like I saw a higher number than 271. Okay. Last hour. Yeah, 275 over 278. Seventy seven, yeah, two seventy seven is the highest. So that's crazy. That's like eighty more than last time. Yeah, thank you, Arif, for coming out. It's uh, always good having a, a big release party, especially yeah, uh, with uh, uh, when we have like someone go in and make the, the amazing uh, the, the map like Hannibal did and like, put all the work into it. Yeah, so I, I remember talking to Hannibal for like a few months on this and stuff. So I think Hannibal's estimate was that the first release map took about like over 100 hours. Um, and so I wonder how much this one was. Probably, uh, probably more than 100 hours, I'd, I'd imagine. All right. Uh, we'll see if I have anything else here in chat. I don't think we've got anything else. So. Uh, thank you, Ray, for coming out today. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll either see you at the next release party, or if I if I uh, get my schedule back for streaming more foreign reading clubs and stuff like that, then hopefully we can see some of those. Um, and yeah, so uh, thanks for celebrating uh, 0.13, and we will catch you next time.
Abraham. 